everyone, welcome back. I'm just gonna speak for the camera again. Uh, this is Pino Trogu from San Francisco State University School of Design. This is the introduction to drawing for designers class. And today is Thursday, April 16, 2020, and we're meeting via Zoom. Um, and today we're going to do a drawing that is uh, an alternative drawing to number 20. Uh, which was the drawing we did on Tuesday, which was the two cubic modules in two point perspective, okay? Um, so you can do this drawing as an alternative, freehand alternative, um, or not, just do the perspective, or you could do both, it's up to you. Um, so uh, you're welcome to do both if you, if you can. Um, it should be pretty straightforward. So we're gonna draw a coffee mug and before I show you my collection that I brought down from upstairs, I will go over um, some pages from this, uh, that I Xerox from this book called uh, Drawing, which I think I showed in class before, I think at the beginning, by this professor Bolin from uh, Mario Bolin. So yeah, I think it's maybe Italian, I mean Swiss, but from the Italian section of, of Switzerland. Uh, and it teaches at the School of Design in Basel, um, which is a, a was teaching maybe by now. Uh, this is a little old, um, which is an, an important design school in this, in Switzerland. Um, so I'm going to show you these pages because pretty much the style we're going to follow, the process is going to be similar. Um, it does introduce perspective a little bit, um, but we can't ignore it. Uh, as much as we want, we, we're gonna do isometric. Uh, so yes, balls, which we did. So we're gonna add a handle to a circular structure and that's gonna be our sort of challenge. Um, so these pictures all have a handle. Uh, we will see that the picture is added along one of the axes. So right here, um, if you look at where the picture is, it's along that axis to make it more easy, more easy to uh, determine where it is. Um, there's a lot of ellipses construction and um, there's always also a little drawing of the side view of that object that we're trying to draw. So we're gonna do that as well. And in this case, there's a variation of the spout of the, um, of the picture there. Uh, they're quite beautiful drawings. I believe these drawings are actually his students. Um, and in this sort of jungle lines, you could always identify ellipses, right? In this case, because it's an ellipse that's representing a circle uh, in three axes. A vertical axis this way, a vertical axis that way, and a horizontal axis that way. So, um, and then he has other drawings in this same series uh, where you can see that it does introduce perspective a little bit. Uh, you can see it here. So once again, we're not, we're not gonna worry too much. If you do, it's very little, right? It's very, it's very subtle. Um, Okay, so we'll put that away. Um, and actually before, um, before we looked at the mugs that I have and the cups, I wanna say just a couple of things about a thing called topology, which is a branch of mathematics that deals with the relationship between the parts of an object or a system and not so much as with the physical dimensions. It's kind of like, uh, sometimes it's called a rubber sheet um, geometry. And I'm just going to show you two examples. One, well, one, I can't really show it because I didn't, I didn't bring a donut. Uh, but one is a comparison between a donut and a cup that we're going to draw. This is a nice espresso cup. And that is that topologically, the two surfaces of these things are actually equivalent. In other words, if you think of this as the handle, and I could try to like make a pocket here, kind of a dip, this can turn into that by stretching it. However, a bottle will never turn into a cup or a donut because it doesn't have a hole. 
you might say, you might say, well, there is a hole there, but in fact, I could flatten this bowl to make it into a disc, uh, and that is in fact how they make um, aluminum cans, like soda cans uh, or beer cans. Uh, what they do is they pound um, that disc until it starts to make, you know, to take that shape, and they keep pounding it until it gets really, really thin. And eventually you get the you get the the can, and then eventually they put the top of the can. But that's how they start out from a disc. So that's an interesting fact, I guess, topological fact. And then the other little um, thing I'm going to show you is a thing called a Mabius strip, which is just fun to construct. It's just a band that you um, make from a strip of paper. Or from other material. And the peculiarity of this band is that when you join it to make a ring, uh, normally you would do this, right? To make a bracelet of sorts. And so this is, uh, you know, what you would expect. And in a surface like this, you have in a shape like this, you have two surfaces. You have one side of the paper and you have the other side. And you also have two boundaries. Um, okay. Now, if I actually turn this now and I flip it, okay, an interesting thing happens. All of a sudden, those two surfaces become one because you can actually ride this racetrack, so to speak and you're always on the same surface and you never get anywhere. And you also have one boundary. So we had two surfaces, one boundary, but now we have one surface and one boundary. Also what happens with this, if you cut it, interesting stuff happens. Let me just join it real quick. Um, so the interesting thing is that if I cut it, if this had been a regular band and I cut it in half, I would just end up with two bands, right? Let's check out what happens when I cut this into two, meaning when I, when I try to double it up. Um, yeah. might imagine that we're not gonna get two bands. In fact, what we get is actually the same band with one more twist. Um, and then we can cut it again and see if we get a longer band with more twists. Oops, this is gonna be tricky because it's so thin, but let's see. So I have one loop. And now if I cut it in half again, now don't ask me what the relationship between the Mobius strip and the cup or the donut, which are the same thing is because I don't know, but um, they're just two of the more common. And here's an interesting thing that happened with this. I actually have two separate loops, which are sort of tied together. Um, so very interesting. Okay, so that's a little bit of topology, which comes from the word topos, which I think means place. Um, and topography, I guess, is the drawing of places as in like a, a geography, right? Geographic map. All right. So, um, real quick, this morning we drew two cups uh, or two mugs, a very straightforward one. Um, well, it turned out it wasn't so straightforward after I tried to draw it. Um, and I mentioned a little bit of uh, how to do a little bit of shading, okay, a little bit of shadows. Um, so I did that one. 
and I did this other one, which was a little bit more complicated. In both cases, I drew a side view of it. Um, and in both cases, the challenging part, of course, is the handle. Um, but we will see that, first of all, we're going to attach it again to that, to that axis, right? We're gonna kind of align it in that plane which would be this plane, right? So we're gonna locate it in that position. So I did the same thing here. Um, and then later on with Val, who was a student that was able to connect, uh, we actually checked his cup that he was trying to draw. And one of the challenges was to, um, to extend the, if it's a flat handle, to extend the, uh, the ribbon, so to speak, um, once you find the center, to extend it both ways. And using tracing paper, I showed that that's, that's a, good, a good way to do it, okay? And by moving the paper in, those, in that direction, sideways. Um, Actually, I did the third one, really simple one. Um, and then at the end, he actually asked me, how could you do this with tools? And with tools, unless you have templates, you know, pre-cut pre ellipses, it's uh, difficult. You have to do a construction, which is um, fairly straightforward. Uh, but for these parts of the cap, it wouldn't be so hard now when you start making your handle, unless your handle is in fact itself um, a circle, or part of a circle, it gets a little more complicated. Okay, so let me um, put all of these away and I'll do, I'll show you all my cups and mugs and On the desk, different types. So these are that's the one I drew this one this morning, and that's the other one that I did this morning. Um, there we go. We can have a tea ceremony. Um, so some of them are again straightforward, but Again, you look at the at the handle and things are not so straightforward. This one is straightforward in the sense that the attachment is quite um, blunt. It's sort of stuck onto it. And some of this, uh, the attachment, these are made by hand. It's much more complicated and stronger or needs to be stronger because it's made by hand. Um, some of these are round, cylindrical. Some of these are sort of flattened. If you notice in all of them, they are rounded. Everything is rounded. And that's just because of ceramics, I think, and the way the glaze kind of uh, distributes itself over the earthware, um, over the clay and smooths itself out. So that makes it challenging, of course, to draw. Uh, that's a cute little, little one. Um, so, and this one is nice, it's round inside, but slightly squarish on the outside. Um, so I think I'll put away the ones I drew this morning, which one was this one, and the other one was this one, and maybe I'll pick this one. Yeah, I'll start maybe with that. Maybe I'll do the little coffee cup after that. So um, I'm drawing on legal size paper today. I couldn't find anything else, but um, oh, Justin, yeah, Justin is asking how many cups you can just draw one, the one you have, because. Um, well, I did, hopefully you have a cup, right? <laughs> I tried to pick something that everyone should have. Um, 
if you don't have a cup with a with a I guess a mug, right? It has to have a handle because that's the challenging part. Otherwise, it's okay. Good. Um, otherwise, it's uh, it's basically like the bottle with just different heights. Um, yeah, you can see if, even at this level, the camera is already distorting my cup. So I'll try to keep it in the center, and I'll draw it. Um, Okay, this weekend I'm gonna to try to fix my camera. I'm gonna to try to do the hack and see if I can get it to focus. Um, okay, so again, a couple of things. Figure out how big it is. So just use your pencil and figure out, okay, it's a little bit shorter. Sorry, it's a little bit shorter than it is wide. Yes, um, so that means What did I say? Shorter, yeah, as in the height. It's a little bit less tall than it is wide. So if I have a square here, I'm gonna make it like that. Then this one is not quite in the middle. It's a little bit, not quite there, it's a little bit below. And then the handle is not quite in the middle of that area, but a little bit below. So just block it out roughly. Um, here, it's a, it's almost a cone, but it's it's actually, well, it's not exactly a round cupola, but it's a kind of a cupola, which, which means that we have, you know, maybe something that looks like that. And for now, I'm gonna disregard all these rounded corners. Also, I'm gonna disregard this since I won't be able to see it. Um, and here, it's just simply. Right, with a little bit, perhaps. Oops, I went too far there. Okay, so that would that's going to give us our basis. Um, Yeah, this this will be good because this handle is is simple simple enough that I, we can think it's a it's a band um, and it's kind of squarish although there is a little bit a little bit of curves. Um, so after a while, you, you should have your cup facing you right, and it should be able to position in such a way that it's about that way right. Because again, we're going to try to. Locate, let's see, I'm gonna draw it much bigger. We're gonna try to locate, or rather view it as if we were, yeah, like that, see that? So, and also the handle should fall, fall in that axis, right? So that means, you know, this would be your, and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, make it smaller now, I just had to do this big so I could overlap the cap on it. But but so the handle is gonna be here somewhere, right? But it's on that on that plane, okay? Remember that this comes from our drawing of a cube, of a very simple cube using, um, using these angles, which are given by our triangles at 30 and 60 triangle, right? Um, so try to always match uh, that those axes. All right, let me now I have to do something here otherwise I can't. Okay, so once again, place if you have your own cup just place it on the desk and try to either lower your head or raise your head or move around so that you get about that ellipse, right? And notice that as, as I move it, you know, the ellipse changes in terms of its proportions, um, but what it doesn't change, no matter how I turn it, well, sorry, this, yeah. If you move around, you always see the ellipse in the same 
orientation. It, it never goes this way or it never goes this way, provided you're staying, you're keeping it, you know, on the table like that, right? Um, which is to say, don't orient your cup like that in your drawing, right? Because you might think, oh, it's, it will be at an angle. No, no, it can't be at an angle. It's always, it's always with this guy, right? That splits the ellipse evenly, always parallel to your drawing, to your sheet, to the edge of your paper, okay? So I'll keep, I'll keep my little sketch there. Actually, I'll keep it here because my camera is in the way. Um, and I'll try not to draw that. Um, I can look at my cup and, you know, once in a while you want to, but right now my position is that I'm actually looking at it too much. I'm seeing it still too open like this as opposed to that. So, um, so I don't have it myself in my, proper position, but um, but here's the trick. Just, just set up your drawing um, as if it were inside the cube, right? Now, when you do that, you'll see the cube is gonna look really big, really wide, and we'll see in a moment why that is. So try to get those angles. Remember, uh, these are the angles that if you were to draw two triangles, they were like perfect triangles, right? That's what you would get. That's how you get 30 degrees, okay? Um, so one way to do it is to try to draw two triangles perfectly. And to check your triangles, you can orient the paper like that. And if you look at it, and it looks like you're splitting it up nicely, uh, th that probably means, yeah, you can see here, probably means it's correct, right? Um, so I'm just gonna make a cube. And you can help yourselves by moving the paper around because remember to work from your, you wanna work from, not from your wrist, right? meaning doing this, but you wanna work from your elbow and possibly from your shoulder so that when you move your pencil, you're really moving, you know, like this, you're really moving from your elbow. Um, it's actually very easy on your body and on your hand if you do that, okay? So it helps to move the paper in the desired, um, in the desired angle, right? Well, the desired angle is, this is the direction of the drawing. This is your pencil, this is your arm, and this is your shoulder, right? So basically that's what you wanna do from here though, right? Like a pendulum. This ideally, that's your fulcrum right there. So, Okay, so that was a reminder of that. And now that I make my cube, I know it's gonna be a little a little shorter, so I have to cut it off a little bit. Oops. And that shouldn't be there because if I cut it, it should be a little higher, but um, I can correct it later. Um, yeah, so it's starting to look very, very wide. But the reason for that is that actually the circle itself will be narrower than our, um, in other words, when I look at this, I'm actually not gonna, my cup is not gonna go from here to here. It's not from here to here. It's actually gonna be smaller, right? Oh, sorry, this will be a circle because this is the, so these, these are my two edges. So when I draw it, um, uh, once again, do a kind of a dry run because um, you, your muscle will get used to it, to that shape. And then when you put the pencil down, it will actually follow what you've been doing before. So you're helping yourself with, with, the, with the bottom of your hand there. So, 
And what you want to try to do is try to hit these four spots, right? Like that. And if you're not satisfied, just keep drawing on it until you are, okay? It's a little funny. It's a little bit bigger on the right side. Anyway, now you'll see that my cup is going to instantly shrink. Um, I know that, you know, this is my division, right? So somewhere here, not in the middle. This is now my, this is gone. Uh, somewhere here, it's going to be the, uh, the end of that, the end of this cylinder, right? So let's say I do that. So every time you do a slice, right? Every time we cut here uh, through this object to draw that ellipse, um, yeah, we're just creating literally sort of a, a scan or a cut or a cut or a slice. So every time what I do is I always make then my divisions inside that particular, particular slice, right? Because it's easy to get lost as to where things are. And if I have that reference point, um, so now it's a matter of roughly, okay, I'm not, yeah, I see I'm, my drawing is a little bit to my right, which is, which is the reason why now all of a sudden everything is being skewed to the, so I have to fix it. Um, I gotta move to the right. And as far as I try, I can't somehow, so. Um, now, when I look at my real object, it looks as if I'm drawing it still a little bit too tall. It looks that this bit relative to the that yeah, it's about as big as the ratio, but of course I can't measure it. So I guess it would be that, yeah. It looks a little bit tall. So what I'll do is I'll, you could erase of course, but i tell you what, let's just not erase because, so instead I'm going to, I'm going to go a little higher. Um, and then this other part. So this other part lies at this level right here at the bottom, right? So it's on this, if, if I did it right, it's here, but since now I'm going up a little bit, I'll go even a little bit more. So what I need to do is identify that plane. And I know the circle is smaller, right? Because it's only that big. Let's take this guy. Um, so because it's smaller, this is my center. Okay, how much smaller it is? Well, I don't know, not quite half, so maybe there. So now I'm going to draw that circle, that base, and you can see a lot of it is going to disappear, right? Because now this is quite a bit smaller there. Um, And to be fair, if I look at it like this, you can see, I don't really see much of this part, uh, even with the distortion of the perspective now. Um, you can also modify your drawing and it's not, doesn't have to be like exactly like the original because unless, unless somebody sees the original, they're not gonna be able to say, well, this is wrong, right? Um, but still, so anyway, a drawing is a, is a fake in a sense, right? It's an abstraction, it's a, it's a game, so right now, in this game, I'm still not happy with how tall this is. So let's see if I, I'll tell you what, I don't want to erase it completely, but I'm going to just lighten it a little bit. Because if I erase it completely, I'll lose sort of my structure. Yeah, this is against my rules, but um, so I'm going to go even higher up now. Because I, I just think, yeah, there we go. And when you connect these lines, you know, the, the vertical, it's, it's a little hard because you have, 
because you have two spots and you want to connect them like this. And when you go on top of it, the easiest is to come off that straight line and go into the curve rather than the opposite. Rather than going like this, you want to go like that because it's easier to start off. Um, yeah, to kind of fade into the curves rather than rather than ending, you know, into that spot right there. So anyway, I'm gonna start darkening a little bit. So to get a little bit of, of um, and I probably should be moving my paper so it's a little bit easier. Um, I wanna connect these to these areas now. Now, if it was straight, all right, if this was a straight line, I could simply, where am I? I could simply do this, right? And I might want to do it, um, and it's and it's underneath, and it's inside here somewhere. It's not at the edge, right? It's a little bit inside. So my line might be, if I were to draw, I have to remember that I'm much higher here. It might have to be like there. So if I if I drew two lines like this, um, that would be a straight a straight cone, right? So instead, I know it's a little bit rounded. So I could just, at this point, in this particular case, I'm just going to eyeball it and round it off. Um, I'm just going to really turn my paper because, as you might imagine, it's really a lot easier. Um, I'm using these really nice pencils, which are kind of soft. Um, so perhaps for these drawings, if you want to use like a B pencil instead of an HB, it might be a little better. Uh, my cup is looking a little bit of an angle, but I can't worry about it too much now. Um, yeah. So now I start to, to kind of give it a little bit of a sort of a general outline. Now here, if you notice, I am actually working from my wrist because I'm going in little strokes, right? I have to have a little more control. And because it's, uh, it's just that little bit, it seems efficient to just work from one's wrist. Um, I just noticed that, so. But I am fading towards the center. I'm not actually trying to connect the line. And so far, we haven't addressed yet um, you know, thicknesses, right? We haven't quite played with this thickness. Before we do that, let's do the handle. So again, if you recall, we're gonna put the handle um, in this plane right here. And it's attached there. So what we need to do is figure out, right, I'm, I'm still, I know it's, yeah, it's this plane. It's not quite a square, it's a little shorter, so. So roughly, oh, and it's also a little bit lower right here. It's not quite from there, it's from down below here. So it's a tiny handle. It's actually really quite tiny and the only way you can Put your fingers, just one finger and the other finger underneath. So it's it's not my favorite handle, but so once I have that, I have to get this extension. And now I'm just gonna show how with tracing paper it can be helpful to figure out the general shape. So if this is my, and again, you know, I'm just gonna highlight it how it is, right? It's part of that larger plane um, and now I need to extend it right so I get a certain thickness a certain width uh, of my handle so what I can do is locate where it is right and now I can just move this way now what I mean by that is that you can actually take the tracing paper. So now I'm gonna go left. So I'm gonna do one more. 
And now I'm going to go, let's see. Now I'm going to go the other way. And I get, you know, I get kind of this layering. Um, now I need to go back to where the spot was, which was that. And um, so this gives me this gives me the location, and this gives me sort of perhaps how wide that thing is. Now it might be too much. Um, so the camera that doesn't focus, and this line is not really a straight line, right? It's more like around the lips. So this is going to be a little bit. Although, because everything is a little bit rounded off here, it's, it's just a, but the general shape is this, right? So that, that can be now useful, even though I'm not using tracing paper anymore, I can, you know, kind of generally try to duplicate it. And it's, it's a little bit, filled with all kinds of marks now. So, so I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can Yeah. I'm not darkening it yet too much because I'm gonna try to give it a little bit of of thickness. Um, and that means, yeah, well, that means just literally just adding. Uh, because it's all round, one thing that one can do is, well, one can start looking at it, right? And saying, okay, how does, how does one show that? Now, this is one way where you, but this can only come after after you have sort of found the general general shape, right? This, these little tricks here. Um, See, so, and the trick is to not, to not completely continue and connect like, and also this one right here to how, how it goes over. But all we can forget about and just show it almost as if it was perfectly cut, perfectly flat, um, in which case we can just thicken it. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to just do that now. I'm just going to pretend that um, that there's a, a certain thickness there. I'm not crazy about that. I, would, I wish it was more like there, but um, so that's it. And oh yeah, we have to do the, the top. Um, now this is tricky because I have to do another ellipse that is just smaller than that. And as, as we know, that's, that's hard. So I think I'm just gonna try to first get it like there somewhere and then kind of going back in. If I try to do strokes that are too short, I'm just probably not going to be correct. Um, let's see, do I see? Oh, no, I see inside. And in my particular case, it's one smooth, one smooth uh, slope. There is no step, so. Um, Okay. After after I I'm sort of happy enough with the general I can what I can do is now darken some of the details, particularly where like there is an overlap. Maybe there, maybe here at an angle, and always fading out a little bit towards the middle, um, just to make it a little more. Um, Let's see, do I see everything here? Yeah, just like there a little bit. 
um, yeah, in just little little bits. One thing, one other thing that we can add, um, and I'm gonna quickly show you some pages from a RapidViz um, class and demo that's actually on YouTube as well. So if you go to YouTube where I have my playlists, um, think yeah this is it there's gonna be a, a little unit called lines of symmetry um, and it started out about yeah blocks and how to um, identify axes in objects but it moves on to um, the shadows and where where you can show shadows based on a very simple setup where you have the light coming maybe from the left or from slightly behind and in plain view you identify um, where you want to put these bands of darker areas and lighter areas and in general if the light is from the left your highlight is going to be at uh, let's see 730 and your darker area what's called the core shadow is going to be at 430 um, if, you, if, you, if it was a clock. Um, and then the other parts which are shown here are that even though you have a dark shadow here, the core shadow, there's always a little bit of light right next to the edge here to create a little bit of a contrast and to set off the object. Just like there's a little bit of dark area here to set off that highlight. Um, and then you have a cast shadow which also fades out. So these are all conventions just to make the drawing good. If you shine a real light on a real object, it might not be exactly like this, but this is a good standard breakdown. Um, excuse me. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll apply this now to our cup which happens to be, you know, basically a cylinder. Um, and then very quickly, if you had a, a round shape, kind of like a sphere, it's similar, but there is a couple of tricks, again, kind of to fold the eye. And that is, if the light is coming from the left, you're gonna have a, a core shadow on the opposite side, but again, to offset and to make it stand out from the background and from perhaps a cast shadow, um, you leave a little bit of a, a sort of a halo of highlight, which could be justified by saying, oh, this is bright right here and there's gonna reflect some light there. The opposite corner here, normally you would have a highlight that would be a bright spot, but since your paper is already brightest, um, what we do is sort of we fake it. We fake a highlight by actually doing a little bit of a mark. Again, one of those things that it's totally unrealistic but it, it works um, and an, and the last thing you, you could use is contour lines which is something we haven't talked about yet but we will uh, well we did when we did the bottles if you recall um, and we can apply them here as well um, and this was just a kind of a diagram if you if you're doing well if you're lighting a scene this is what typically is done in movies, for example. You always see these people with beautiful hair and the, they have a backlight, so there's a, a halo around their hair. Uh, but in general, you have a main key light from one side, a fill light, which reflects some light, so it's not too dark here in the shadow area. Um, this is showing how to apply that same. Uh, by the way, this is unusual, normally, we would do that, which is um, we would create a shadow just by doing strokes, which are not these kind of strokes. That's not good. It's like deliberate single strokes, maybe spaced out more if you wanted to show a fading out. Okay. So let's do those two things real quick for this cup, which is a little bit of um, a little bit of shading um, and also. Uh, contour lines. So contour lines 
could be this. Um, let's say maybe this is like that, whatever this object is. Um, so if I put a contour line, it would be something that, you know, gives it, gives the object a little bit of a three-dimensionality, okay? Especially where you have a jump like that, you see how that doesn't continue straight. Um, it also has a, it has a break there. So that's going to happen here in our cup. Um, So for convenience, we'll place the contour line here. And the contour line actually, if the edge of that cup is round, um, it can help give that sense of that. So here I, I, can, I can kind of round it a little bit. And here I just have to try to follow that, right? Oops, I didn't mean to do two lines too late. So these are lines that don't exist, but but they help. Um, I could do them here, although it's gonna conflict a little bit with my handle, but I could just do it very lightly. So it's not as strong. Um, right, it's these little details right here with these lines so that this appears behind, that's gonna give you that sense of three dimensionality. Um, so let's see, yeah, now my contour lines are going to conflict a little bit with the shading, right? So perhaps what I can do is actually kind of make it double it up as my, as my, um, I'm going to leave it light because it's, there's too much going on here, but you can see what, how this works. You can then do kind of fading out areas on the side. Also fading out within the same shadow so that there is variation, you know, moving down. Right? It's always nice to have a fade out effect um, as opposed to do it all the same. Um, then here inside will be on the opposite, right? So in this case, the light is coming from this side. Um, so, but because I don't wanna mess too much inside here, I'm just gonna add a little bit. Very important, also keep your strokes exactly in the same direction when you're trying to define shadows uh, because otherwise it's going to look like a thing in the object um, oh yeah and the last thing we could add is maybe a shadow here which would look what like what let me think be like that it's a little funny because it might be something like that i don't know I, this is not the time where i should stop and instead i'm gonna mess it up too much but I don't know. I don't know if that works. I think it's it's okay. Um, again, fading out. Okay. So, um, so that's one. And as you can see, it's not a perfect drawing of the cup, but it does give, I think, a sense of the structure of the cup. Um, if I have one criticism in the end, remember how I just kept going up and up, making this narrow? In the end, I should have also done the same here because it, it looks a little bit, this part down below looks even like the one at the top, but it, it, it isn't. So I think in my cup, I made it a little bit taller than, than it really is. Um, you know, it was, pro it was probably should have been something like this. Right? So 
there's always time for a second drawing, I guess. Yeah, this this is more like a, um, but nobody's gonna know, right? If I don't show them the real cup. So. Okay. Um, yeah, that's that's it. So you know, d draw your own cup, um, and if it's more like a coffee cup, um, this happens to be a super nice, like the ones you find in bars, um, in in coffee shops, um, because it's really thick. So it's really nice when you use it, um, and it has just enough for the for the espresso. Um, When you have a, a curve that's you know kind of more continuous but changing all the time, what you need to do is you need to find it in different slices. Why don't we draw that real quick? Um, and then um, and then I can probably stop too. Um, so. Let's let's draw these again here, and so it's about again it's a little bit less tall than it is wide, um, which is funny, right? Because it looks it looks like it's tall, at least to me right here. But if I look at it, measure it, yeah, it's not as tall. So so again, if it's if I start with a square. I know it's, it's a little bit shorter than it is, uh, but because you're it's really it's really optically funny, right? That it should be not as tall as it's it's wide, but I guess it's true. Um, so now I try to try to get that shape. Oh, let's see how big it is at the bottom. So look at that. It's exactly it's exactly half. So that's I, I, I had it about right. Um it would be fun to draw a section of this. Like if we cut this up, we would say it's shaped like this. It's got a perfect, perfect oval inside. So I'm just doing this for fun because we're not drawing a section. But um, and then here, I'm just going to eyeball it, this ear. Looks too big. A little smaller. And it's a little lower. Um, okay, well, I don't know if it's just right or off, but so this, of course, is. Hello. Um, this, of course, is this, the section that if I spin it around, I get the cup, right? Um, well, except, except for that, we don't want that group um, being everywhere. But um, so I'm just going to now try to. Uh, there is something to to be said about drawing big, right? And the fact that if I draw these now like really large, uh, the uh, fine motor skills of your hand and the detail part that's involved with that is less of an issue, right? Because I don't have to worry about little tiny things. I can just move my hand really, really big, really, really wide. Um, and that often is a good way to um, how should I say, compensate for perhaps the lack of practice, the lack of 
having, you know, knowing how to do something already. Um, also, that allows you to get away from the drawing, right? Because if you do really small, you have to like, you know, go in there and your head's gonna get. Um, there was a student once in my class who was not exactly blind, but she really was very, uh, I guess what's the word, short-sighted? Short-sighted, long-sighted, far-sighted, I think far-sighted. So she had to really look, she had to get her face really close to the drawing in order to be able to see what she was drawing. But what I said to her, I said, well, why don't we take larger paper and draw really, really big? And so when she did that, she was able to do actually beautiful drawings. This was in rapid visualization where, um, where she could do really big strokes. So I'm kind of going to do that right now. This camera stops jumping around. Um, and I'm going to draw these really, really big just for fun. Okay. Um, so let's see. So again, I start with a cube and then I cut off a piece, right? And a cube. And I'm gonna now literally, I'm gonna step back myself. You can't see me, but I'm moving away from my desk so that I can extend um, my arm instead of being, you know, right here, right? I'm actually moving away so that my arm can be, you know, of course you have to, I'm helped by the fact that I have um, casters on my chair and a nice piece of plexiglass underneath so it's easy for me to move but try to do that because um, then you're um, yeah then then you're you're more free to move right um, so that I can work from my shoulder and again I move away and I'm gonna do a cube right so in most cases it seems like a cube is always Um, so let's try to do that. I'm just going to do it fast now. I was hoping there was some nice music on the radio, but I'm challenged by the technology today. First the camera, then Zoom. It's always something. Um, again, I can do a check and see if I'm drawing two nice triangles. They're a little bit squished. So not quite perfect. Um, a little refresh on the ellipses. Remember that you want to do your ellipses with these two axes where this is the vertical. Oh, there it is. Um, and your cup, your ellipse is always going to be going up straight like this, right? It's not going to be going like that. That would be bad. So your object is going to be all, it, it, it's not sitting on the flat plane if you draw it like that. So make sure it's always perpendicular and straight like that. So I can, I'm going to fit that there this way with this going this way and not like that. That would not be right, right? Or like that. Ore Pino Saulo, Dito di Paola Simone Sottili. In just un po' abbiamo aperto. Okay, I'm just gonna leave this sound on if you guys don't mind. I think they're gonna play music right away. It's uh it's called Beats. It's, it starts at midnight, which just passed in Italy. It's five after midnight, so um and yeah, so now I'm gonna really play up this cube thing by also just moving my paper around. I'm trying to think uh, if the reason I was getting propor my proportions off is because in fact I am drawing, you know, a cube. No, it's correct because yeah this actually is equal to that so it makes sense okay i was wondering if because i do the ellipse and the ellipse narrows it that's why then things are off it could be it's something i have to investigate but for now i'm gonna stick to that so i'm gonna cut it off a little bit um uh, 
I have too many sheets. I'm going to take off some. Um, I mean, when we do these ellipses, it's not that much different from the bottle, right? We really are kind of doing a variation of. So again, I do a, a dry run and then I just try to hit. Now, if it's too big, now I'm challenged by the fact that they're too big because I actually have to move my arm almost too much, but um, it's okay. I, you can almost think of it as painting at some point. Um, so down below here, Um, we have to do a circle that's about half, right, of the larger circle. So I'm going to inscribe that now in a smaller space, this being the center. And I'm going to do my lips there. Okay. Now, because the curve is sort of a it's kind of an S, like here, normally, let's see, it would be something like this, right? If it was a, a regular cone, right? But instead it bulges out here and then it bulges the opposite way there, right? But, but, but very, very little, right? So in other words, what is that called? A sinusoidal curve, those of you who have done waves. Um, that's a little too much, right? It's actually much, it's less, but, um, but that's the idea. So what I could do to try to replicate that here, I could try to connect my ellipses. First of all, let's see if I can get this to be symmetrical. As you can see, it's always <laughs> I'm challenged because it's always a little bit skewed. So I'm going to try to see if I can correct that. Move it a little bit. Move it over a little bit. Um, and yeah, so now I'm going to try to apply this, this idea. Now, I can't because, well, Let's see, it's just a little bit. So I'm gonna try to just very little. When pra to practice these curves, you can do a thing in calligraphy, you would have this like beautiful, blah, 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 you know, very official. And then at the end, they would do this thing. I don't know if you ever seen that kind of thing. That's actually a good way to practice like changing direction. Um, so here I'm doing that. I'm just like, and for now, I'll just leave it. Of course, now the tricky part will be matching this in the opposite direction. I guarantee it's not easy, but one can try. It's not too bad. Yeah, and my ellipse is not quite symmetrical, so I have to adjust that. Moving your paper is really saves the day. Um, I look at this again and realize, oh, it doesn't really curve at the end here. It goes, it goes nice out and straight like here. So here I have to fix that a little bit. Um, so I'll just play the music since it's very cool. Um, and they don't have accents either. Um, music does sometimes help, I think. 
Okay, another thing against my rules here, but. It's still a little bit skewed. I wonder if, yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit. I think part of it is this line should be a little more straight, but. So anyway, I'm just gonna do a fairly thick inner rim here. Even though again, it's so smooth, right? One way that one can show that is to do this kind of thing, but it's hard. Uh, yeah, sorry, like that. But I think the solution is worse than the than the than just leaving it alone. Um, we'll try to with the contour lines to make it look more round. And it's a little bit too. Okay, so now I look at it again and realize, you know, maybe it should be smaller. Right here, it has a little more. And speed sometimes is very good because it, it forces you to just make decision and just go for it. Now, as you can see, as soon as I raise, it looks like, oh, this guy had, a tr had some trouble, right? Um, but this is better, right? This is a better shape. So let me put the, uh, the handle if I can, in that plane. Oh, if we do the our contour lines, right? Contour lines are going to be here. Um, so. Actually, this contour line does help me because it's the it's the spot where I'm going to attach the handle. And now I'm just going to quickly eyeball where things might be. So it's a little bit lower. So I bring it down, and then it's about there. And then I just create a shape that I'm going to enclose that. So I define it there, and I try to match it here. Now, because it's all rounded off, um, I'm just gonna pretend first that it's just like a, a flat thing, and then I'm gonna move it across. Now, again, if you use tracing paper, you would be able to take that shape. Oops, right here, I made a mistake there again. It's more like, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. let's see, it's more from here. Maybe I should look at it again. Uh, let's see. I think I, I have to. I, I see a little bit less. It has to be a little more inwards. Um, so let's see. Yeah. So then with tracing paper, I can. I can say if I move this line sideways this way, I can kind of build, right? And you see what happens here, it just narrows, right? But that's that's roughly the other edge and then maybe the inside is like this. Now this is of course, if it was straight cut and without the rounded parts. So with this on the side now I can try to, and it'll be okay, right? And, it, and it's more or less this design. It's just that it's with all the rounded parts, it's a little more elaborate, but I can, I can try to approximate. Uh, 
actually it's round here so um, so I just I just copy meaning I move it sideways and now I'm just going to I'm just going to do a around the thing there Yeah, for some reason it looks like it's falling off, right? Um, but so now I'm just actually looking at the cup and let's say the way you would see it. Of course, when I, I was trying to figure out, you know, what I was going to draw is this sort of alternative drawing. And my wife said, oh, you could do a mug. So, oh, I said, that's a great idea. That's a simple object. Well, <laughs> of course, it's not so simple. Um, I recommend, yeah, taking the rapid visualization class with Professor Natata if you're into these things, because he's, he's quite good. Um, I think the main issue with this is that it's lying somehow on a different plane than it should be. Like it should be on this plane, but somehow it's it's twisting and I can't figure out why. I think it's because I I veered off too much from our contour line here. In fact, if I if I trace this, let me see. If I trace this and I turned it a little bit, it would probably look better. You see how that is actually looking better? How about that? Much better. So let's do it in a quickly. Uh, remember, since we're not artists, right, in the pure sense of the word, but we're designers, we can get away with a lot of a lot of stuff. We just okay. So let me. I'm just going to. Yeah, if you don't finish your lines, it looks more like a curve like that. So let's adjust that. Except that's really a straight line following the thing. So I'm just going to adjust that too and moving it even a little bit. Yeah, there you go. Look at that. That was that was part of the problem. The attachment here had to follow. You can really see it. Had to follow the shape of the cup. Um, that that kind of gives it a nice clue that it is following the right. Okay, I'm just gonna trace this now to just. See how it how it should be, uh, and I'm gonna make my rim a little bit smaller. Uh, we're gonna do the contour lines again. Yeah, that's that's better. Still not perfect, but it's it's a little bit better. And even a simple drawing like this now, I could you know I could just highlight some parts, especially like these parts where the things come together. And, then, and instead fade fade out other parts. And sometimes even just a little touch of like um, a very quick, 
you know, I don't know, maybe we, right, it's enough to give it a little bit of, Um, and then here maybe we do. So if you do a shadow, a simple way is to just draw an ellipse, kind of embracing, in, encompassing the base. So like that. And then once again, you just, you just fade the, um, again, just straight strokes, yes? No, no, like, no zigzag like that, or just like fuzzy, things like that. You could, but it would take a long time and you don't have. Now you could go back and perhaps doing a little bit more dance, but. Maybe even the shadows can have their own little. Um... Now, the reason this one is not working so well is because right here, I'm actually kind of in the front. So if I drew a, a contour line here, that line would actually end pretty straight down. Whereas here, it's a little bit smoothed out. So, so here, I don't have so much of a curve anymore. It's more, more straight like that yeah okay um so let's see yeah we did that one and we did this too so we did this guy this guy. Uh, sort of, kind of fits. One could almost check it to see if they did it by, well, in my case, because I have a camera, could do that for this one. Um, 